Welcome back to Saturday AM. Today marks the start of Bike Week, a celebration and promotion of all that's great about bikes and cycling. Yes, indeed. That's why we've invited Dara Magali, mobile bike doctor with the Cycle Clinic, to show us how to make sure your bike is keeping you as safe as possible on the road. Good morning to you, Dara. Good morning. Lots of people cycling these days. It's Absolutely. become extremely it popular, huge. especially with the Bike to Work scheme as well. Um, so we need to make sure our bike is as safe as possible, as we said. So yep. the M-check, tell us about the M-check and so what the, it is, first of all. The M-check is a way of looking at the bike in the shape of the letter M. So we cover everything. We start at the bottom, move up, down, up and down. And we cover all the moving parts and make sure things are in a nice, safe condition. Do you think, as Anna mentioned, so many people are cycling to work mm -hmm. and for leisure purposes these days, do we pay enough attention to our bikes? Uh, it depends. When I'm mobile, I go out and I look at people's bikes. Sometimes you go to houses and bikes are in a shed for many, many weeks and they haven't been touched. Mm. Um, other people, quite surprisingly, commute every day and their bikes are in quite bad condition. So the idea of the M check is to look at the bike and do a quick one minute check before you get on the bike. Okay. Very easy to do. Some things might be a bit more complicated and that's when you go to a bike shop or call ourselves. So what do we start with? So we start at the bottom of the letter M, which is around the wheel. We make sure it's nice and secure. It shouldn't move sideways. Um, in this case, it's a skewer lock, so we just make sure that's on nice and tight. Moving up then, we look at the tyre condition and we look at the brakes. So, this example here, we have the tyre is in poor condition. You can see a lot of cracking along the sides here. Okay. And you can see a lot of cracking along here. Well, would that not come from wear and tear anyway? It would, but over time, more than likely what's happened here is that the tyre pressure was down quite low. Maybe it was in the shed for a couple of weeks over the winter, over the bad season. Mm. And it's then been cycled on. So you get a lot of wear marks and it's perished along the side, particularly along this white mark here. So you see, if you pump this up and you're cycling along, it'd be more prone to possibly blowing up uh, and also picking up a lot of debris, which if you cycle along the canals and anywhere in the city centre, there is a lot. So important to recognise the difference between normal wear and tear of a tyre uh -huh. and then a dangerous one. Yes. Um, tyres are quite cheap to replace. It's just how to spot what's, what's wrong with it. Okay. Um, how to pump up a tyre then, it's on, written on the side of each tyre, it will tell you the pressure to pump it up to. So it's quite easy, if I can show you, mm -hmm. and it will say normally up to 65 to 85 psi. Uh, so that's pound per square inch on every pump, there's a gauge, pretty much. Some people have them on the bike, or you'd have it on a large pump at home. Okay. Normally keep it on the bike because obviously when you need to pump it up or when you get a puncher is when you're not at home. Um, Keeping them at the right pressure will prevent a lot of accidents, possibly. Um, it is the point of contact with you and the road, so it's quite important to keep an eye on this maybe every week, every two weeks. Um, so wheels are vital. And then if we move up along the end? Um... Move up then and we look at brake pads. So brakes should feel nice and responsive. You can tighten and adjust the cables by turning the adjustment barrel up here on top and locking it into place. It should feel like this. People, when they feel the brakes, they go, oh, that's OK, but you need to look at the brake condition as well. So on the brake pads, they wear down over time. It depends how much you cycle, obviously. Mm -hmm. And I have an example here of a worn brake pad and a good brake pad. OK. So if you can see these, maybe. We'll hold them to camera so um, the camera can pick them up. OK. Oh, there's quite a difference there. There's there is. So there's a wear indication there. line, and they'll erode over time. And it's just important to keep an eye on them. Obviously, it's nice to be able to stop. This here is a good one with nice defined markings mm. and this one here is worn completely. So time to replace. And yeah. is there a guide in terms of how often they should be replaced? It depends on, on how you cycle. If you regularly check the bike, a do the M check, then you can, you can see it going down over time. Uh, they're fairly cheap to do, a little bit, not too hard to put on, but there is a correct way of doing it. Um, obviously, it's, it's quite important to be able to stop. We live in a country where there's a lot of rain and, you know, it is good to be able to stop on time. Mm. Um, we move up then and we cover around the controls here. So again, with just Allen keys, little small little tools that you can normally keep in your saddlebag. You just tighten all these guys and make sure they're nice and secure. They won't come loose that often, um, but part of the M-check is to make sure that your controls are nice. We move down then and we make sure that the pedals and the crank arms don't move side to side. They should be nice and firm and your pedals move smoothly as well. Finally then you move up and come around the seat post and saddle area. Again, just a quick tighten. Um, all the tools will fit generally into a little bag here, and you can get Allen keys like this guy, they're very cheap, in which are punch So very kit. handy to have your own little tool kit Absolutely, with you. Absolutely, yeah. While you're on the road, so these little guys cost probably 10 euro in both stores. Um, 
and they'd cover all the different tools that you need on the bike. Okay. Finally, then you'd move down to the bottom. Um, so we've covered up, down, up and down. Again, we checked the tyre condition on the back. So this is a newer tyre. You can see it's much better condition. Yeah. Uh, newer brake pads. The brake cable is quite responsive as well. It's flicking back. And we make sure a chain is lubricated and oiled regularly. So there is lubricant sprays you can get. Fairly cheap again. And it's good to keep it in good condition and get rid of the debris and also keep it oiled up on the little bits on the inside. That will keep you moving and also with the brakes will keep you stopping. Brilliant. It's that easy. It takes about two minutes. Do it regularly. Keep your bike in good condition. It's about getting into the habit of doing these checks on a regular basis, it's, isn't yeah. it? If you cover it regularly, you can prevent a lot of issues. Mm. Uh, preventative maintenance is, is a very good thing to do on a bike. Of mm -hmm. course. Uh, a few important accessories as well. Yes, yeah, so we have some, there's a lot of, large range of clothing, so standard kind of high-vis jacket uh, right. with reflective stripes on it. But it's also windproof, waterproof, they go for about 40, 50 euro in most mm. stores. Um, nice breathable as well, so you don't get into work covered in sweat, you know, it's, it's, it's always nice. And finally, can we talk just about the helmet, like what are the sure. laws? Uh, it isn't the law to wear a helmet, uh, although it is recommended by certain people, um, you either of them are hating, but it is good to be seen as well, so you can but get even if you hate high vis Do you not think it's nuts not wearing a helmet? I would, have, I would have thought so. I was shocked to see it wasn't the law. Well, there's a large debate around it. Um, personally, I reckon, because I've come off a bike quite a few times, <laughs> and mm. there's other safety bits you can get as well, so knee pads, all of that, and protective um, trousers that will have a bit more protection on them. Uh, other things to be seen by our motors, which there is a couple of issues on. Uh, some of the reflective LEDs, so a kind of more advanced version of the older style mm -hmm. leg bands, putting it around your leg because that's the bit that moves of course. quite quick yeah. and people tend to see it more. Um, Easy but effective, yeah. Yeah, and unfortunately this year we have a massive amount of, of cyclist deaths compared to last year, which is, is not nice at all. It's not the news um, we want to hear at all, no, is it? Not at all. Um, Dara, just before we let you go, there is a big event tomorrow in there the velodrome is. in Smithfield. So, Cycle Clinic are supporting doing the mechanical support for the street velodrome. It's going to be a fantastic event. It's on Smithfield from Sunday and Monday. Um, there's pro racing, there is amateur racing, and the velodrome is track cycling, where it's steep to banked sides. So it's amazing to watch. And it's the most accessible type of cycling sport, so people can come in from different disciplines, whether you're a mountain biker, BMXer. The good thing about this, apart from being free to watch, is you can participate. So wow. if you get in early, get in, it's going to be something completely different. There's a whole big event happening with all music, uh, food, obviously the cycling village will be great. there as well. So it's a family event as well as yeah. cycling enthusiasts. Yeah, but it's something completely different that great you won't see anywhere else. Brilliant. Yeah, it's amazing. Dara, thanks so much for coming. I've learned a lot this morning.